life. Welcome to Live Edge, episode number next. I'm Matt. I'm Amy. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Mr. Justin Ross, who just completed an internship and is now an official Finnish carpenter. And he's going to tell you how, if you're interested, you could also, Mike, could do that. But first, we're going to talk about our uh, Sawdust Spotlight. We pick it out every week from the community, our Facebook community. If you don't know, we have a Facebook community. And if you go to facebook.com slash group slash 731 Bullworks, you can join that community Absolutely for free. And join in on the community. It's like 30,000 strong right now. Uh, the only thing you have to do is answer two questions when you get there. Will you be nice? And what is the other one? Oh, what's your favorite tool? That keeps the bots out. And uh, if you're not nice, <laughs> we just kick you out. Because I don't want to be mean, but we don't want no meanness in there. This is the, this week's Auto Spotlight picked out by Miss 731. Oh, herself. you're using that one? Yeah, I had another one, but Aww. they got bumped. Oh. <laughs> now, here it is. Sorry to whoever got bumped. <laughs> This is from Jay Brun, a fun little Easter project. Check that out. Pretty cool little project to hold an Easter eggs. I know mm -hmm. when we was kids, our kids would have loved to uh, put their dyed Easter eggs in that. And with the cost of eggs, you can use potatoes, whatever you need to do. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. I love that's, those. Even put a tail on it. Did you notice that? I know. That's what I said to you while ago. It even had a cotton tail. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Wow. Mm. And to be fair, the one that we had picked also is Mr. Bob Abbott. We're going to have two this week. Uh, he said, I see your cedar planters and I raise you the cedar tower. Oh, I planter. didn't see that. That's really cool. All of those pieces slide in. So there's no nails to be done. All the, the customer can just slide them in. What? Yep. Pretty neat. That is. That's and really also cool. we will be drawing for a festival track saw to be given away tonight. Yep. It ends at 7.20 That's my giveaway, y'all. That is Miss 7.31. If you haven't entered, you still have a little bit of time. It ends link, at 7.20, Braver. Link Braybert. in the description below. Don't fall off, mouse. All right. Mail call. Mail call. All right, Mr. <laughs> Almost dropped it. You can't trust me with stuff like this. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is from our good friend, uh, Mr. Jeff Allred from Allred Woodworks. He sent us hmm. the empty tomb ticket. Well... There's a magnet mm -hmm. right there that so, holds yeah. the stone. So it's the stone before it rolls away and the stone after. And then when you roll Super it away. Super cool. The magnet catches it and holds it. Keeps it from moving. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yep. Thank you, brother. Love it. Here, I'm going to set this down You here. probably better sit it down. We haven't assembled it yet. Um, That's why it's a little... Uh-oh. Because no, yeah. we know we That saves me from making it crash here. Just yep. Okay. Without further ado, let's bring on when I find it. <laughs> Mr. Justin Ross, what's up, man? Hey, guys. What's up, guys? <laughs> How are you? I love that tune. That is awesome. <laughs> Isn't that, is that cool? It's very cool. That's awesome. So we met Justin at WorkbenchCon officially and uh, was honestly one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. <laughs> we we talked about how nice he was uh, from since we come back. We were impressed with you, Justin. Very impressed with this young man. Oh. He, uh, man, just I don't want to tell us. You tell us your story on how you're a finished carpenter now, but you got there in a kind of a unique way that I've never heard of before. Yeah. So, well, first of all, at the um, welcome meeting at Workbench Con, I got there kind of late. We all. Like, there weren't enough seating so we all stood in the back and i was sitting there with my buddy and i'm right in front of me i'm looking at you guys and i'm like wait a second is that is that matt and amy yeah. I was like, no way i was like matt and amy is right in front of me because i've been watching you guys for so long so it was just awesome it was like it's a real moment and then i was like i gotta talk to matt i was like what am i gonna do what am i gonna say and then um the class ended you walked out and i was like oh crap i gotta go run so i left my buddy <laughs> quick ran over to you guys and uh say hi um but yeah so my journey to becoming a finished carpenter do you want the long version or the short version we won't ever whatever version yeah, just you want to tell give us a version of that so somebody was interested in doing what you did mm -hmm. basically how it come about for you and especially at your age yeah at your age how old are you now i'm 20 oh wow I overestimated. I called you 22 or 23 while ago. I knew he said he was younger <laughs> yeah. than that. He can't remember things. <laughs> um, okay. Well, so I had just graduated high school, and I was going to go to college to take over my dad's uh, construction business. 
I grew up, uh, my dad owns a pretty big commercial construction business, so I've been around it my entire life. I'm generational. Um, there's been generations of construction uh, business owners and carpenters um, in my family line. So that's what I was on my journey to do. And that summer, my pastor was discipling me throughout the whole time. And he kept talking about, like, man, like, I really think God, like, has a plan for you to become a pastor and begin a ministry. And I more or less told him, like, okay, I'll pray for it. But knowing full well, I wasn't going to pray for it. I had no plans. I had my entire, like, life figured out. So I go to college, and I'm midway through my first semester, and honestly, it sucked. It was just not um, not what I expected. And in that time, I say God like broke my heart in the best way possible to help me realize that I wanted that I I, uh, I had a burden, right? I had a desire um, to get into ministry and for the lost people. And so I enrolled in this um, in this ministry program. And that's all online, and it's built to uh, work around someone who has a family or has a normal work week. So I was like, well, now what am I going to do? I could stay in college. I could work for my dad in his um, construction business, or I could start my own woodworking business. And I really wanted to start my own woodworking business because that's what I loved. You know, that's what um, I just consume on YouTube. Like, that's, that's what I was all about. And those were kind of the three options that were in front of me. And it was during that time, my brother found out about Finish Point's apprenticeship program that they offer. And so it was just such a cool God moment because it was the combination of all of the things that I was um, trying to uh, pursue. It had the education that I wanted from college. It had the actual job that I wanted from my dad's um, business. And then it also had the woodworking that I wanted to do from starting my own woodworking business. So I applied and it was one of those, like, I don't think, it was like when you apply for a giveaway, like this festival giveaway that you guys yeah. got going on. Like I entered, do I think I'll win? Probably not. But <laughs> you never know. It was, it was like that. I entered and it was like, God, if, if you want me here, you'll take care of it. I know you will. And sure enough, deadline for my uh, college um, down payment for the next semester comes up. And it was one of those, what do I do? I didn't, I didn't have a yes from finish point. And it was just time to take a faith-filled risk. And yeah. so I did, and I'm so happy I did, because a couple months later, um, yeah, God worked through it all, no interviews or anything like that. I just got an email saying, hey, are you still interested? And I was like, yes. And so I got the call, I got hired, and I moved um, from Pennsylvania to Tennessee a little bit later. And so... I guess I mentioned um, our apprenticeship program without actually saying what it is. <laughs> so finish point trim and millwork, uh, we do high-end finished carpentry in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we have a apprentice scholarship opportunity that has some awesome benefits. You get a paid moving expense. You have a three month buyout of your current lease. You have a flight or four flights home per year to see your family. You have 66 cents per mile to relocate and you have your lodging covered for up to a year you get a fifteen hundred dollar tool budget and all of that you get thirty to fifty thousand to learn it's a full-time job and also just recently we've partnered with milwaukee tools <laughs> and you also now get pack out um, oh that's cool come as a part of the team through our apprenticeship program and and it literally teaches you like you you're an apprentice under a finished carpenter and he teaches or they teach you uh, all aspects of finished carpenter. So when you're done with this program, you can either stay or go, right? Right. Yeah. So the whole idea with all of this is to basically equip you to be able to go back home or go back to wherever and do your own thing and you know get your own apprentices, and they equip you with not only just the tools, not only just the skills, but then they also have monthly business classes where they teach you the ins and outs of business. And they also what? have monthly leadership classes to where it teaches you just how to be a leader in a team. That's pretty cool. That is cool. And you just recently got a promotion, right? Yes. So I just got promoted, uh, I don't know, like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And I, uh, 
I'm humbled and, and blessed to be able to be the fastest, uh, basically, journey from apprentice to carpenter. And so now the whole goal is to get someone else to be the fastest. That's that's the goal is trying to get the next guy to be the fastest. Yeah, it speaks so volumes we'll of you, happens. though. You know, you put in the time, you put in the work, you put in the effort. You put in the prayers. Put in the prayers and uh, also the leap of yeah. faith, which can't be discounted yeah. because a lot of times to get to that next level, you have to take that leap. Yeah. And it's scary. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, and my college was paid for. And like I said, I had my dad's business basically, um, within a uh, grasp to take over once I was done with college. So yeah, lots of people thought I was an idiot. Um, <laughs> and people were like, what in the world are you doing? And I, you know, to the non-believers, I was like, I don't know how to explain this to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just got to do it. Um, Scruffy yeah, said, exactly. it sounds like it was a well thought out program. It does. It sounds mm-hmm. like that program put in a lot of time and thought into who, you know, what kind of person they're wanting to bring to them too. Mm-hmm. you know, so that is pretty cool. Uh, what, is there an age limit on apprenticeships or do they just go all by application? There is not. There's so, no age limit and we are also opening up to now there's no experience limit. We oh, are cool. also going to take in carpenters to come in and have all these benefits. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, so I, I feel like that's going to be a whole lot like when I was a state trooper. When we hired a former police officer from any other agency to come work for the Arkansas State Police, we had to retrain them on how they thought because it's a totally different mentality on being a trooper versus being a regular, like a city police officer. or Like it's just different work. And so I would assume that you're going to have to do the same thing with a carpenter coming to finish car. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, Steph just reminded us, too, of what you always say. If people are not laughing at your dreams, you're not dreaming big enough. That's right. So, yep. That's what we say all the time. That's one of his biggest uh, things is if you're not making people laugh at what you're saying, you know, if they think you're crazy, then that means maybe you're dreaming big enough. Sometimes you, know? you got to be a little crazy yeah. to chase them. Yep. That's right. A lot of people think I'm crazy because I'm coming home this year, but <laughs> yep. I'm coming home. So if somebody was interested in this program, is there a website they can go check out or how does that work? For sure. So you can check out Finish Point Trim on Instagram. And we also have a website. If you search Finish Point Trim, uh, it should pop up. It should be like one of the first things to come. And you can uh, see our videos and you can also see our uh, uh, applications. So currently in the description of our, this, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no, 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 you're good. I was going to say currently our apprentice scholarship opportunity is closed, but in May we'll have the next round of um, choosing. So in the description of this video, if you're interested in seeing kind of what he said about the uh, program, there's a, a, a link to a reel that they that Finish Point made, and you can also follow their page there as well as Justin's Instagram is down there too. So that'd be a good way to check it out. So we have somebody new to our live stream tonight. His right. name's Brandon, Brandon, but he's Outlaw. also known as Outlaw. I like it. He said he's not new to uh, building things, but he's fairly new to woodworking. So welcome, welcome Outlaw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're already family. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been the uh, most challenging part of moving to a new location and doing this uh, internship? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So... They and they even told me this coming in. They said, Hey, like, we're getting rid of any reason why you wouldn't come work for us, minus the fact that we can obviously bring your family. And it was a hard transition moving to a new place without knowing anybody. And I was leaving. I love my family, awesome family. My girlfriend is still in Pennsylvania, and I also had just an awesome church uh, community uh, back in Pennsylvania. And so moving, the biggest prayer was just to find a church, find opportunities to minister, and also finding opportunities um, to just be in a community like that. And actually, one of my coworkers invited me to church, like, I don't know, maybe two months after I was working at Finish Point. And it was awesome. There was a baptism service, and like kids were getting baptized. Random strangers at the park were like, man, if these kids are getting baptized, what am I waiting for? And it was just awesome. That's and awesome. So since then, I've been going to the, the church. But that was definitely the hardest part was, especially as an extrovert, going from a little town 
big fish in a small pond to not knowing anyone. Yeah. That's awesome. I can imagine that would be hard, especially if you've never lived away from uh, your parents before and you move across the country and you know nobody. Like, that would be tough. Yeah. How did your parents react to it? Were they, well, you said you had a good family. I'm I'm sure they were supportive yeah. of what you were doing, but, oh, my gosh, it would be so hard for one of my boys or <laughs> my daughter to, how did they handle it? Well, my mom was supportive all the way through. She yeah. thought this was the coolest thing ever. Um, she knew that this was an answer to prayer. My dad, he was a little skeptical. He thought the whole thing was fake. He thought this was like way good to be true. There's no way that a company is actually doing this. And eventually once I came down and visited and he realized it was a real thing, yeah, he thought it was great. And he was supportive all the way. It was definitely hard. Like don't get me wrong, there's a lot of tears shed when uh, when I moved. But yeah, yeah. overall, like it's they were supportive. So with him owning his own construction company and you going through this experience, is there any thought of doing something similar when you go back? If you wind up taking over his company later in life or anything that you, you yeah. know, you could take this experience and basically recreate it somewhere else. Yeah. So my brother actually, he's lived in Virginia. Um, he went to college. My brother's older than me so he was in Virginia for the last seven years he just moved back home and he started their own training program at my dad's company and um, so he's he's taking over that he's, yeah. he's rocking it he's killing it that's awesome I my my tentative plan is to be a bivocational uh, pastor and carpenter finished carpenter and the whole idea is to like take people mainly like younger people from the church, like maybe some high school kids, you know, take them in in the summers or whenever and just kind of disciple them and um, also teach them trades, have them as my apprentice and just give them, you know, just a solid relationship uh, in high school and also give them a skill that they can take anywhere. I love That's it. That's awesome. I love it. That's something that's so needed right now. It is. I think a lot of, especially if you – like regular media and stuff like that, just and schools too push the only way to succeed is college. And some of us, myself yeah, included, are not cut out for college. Like I hated it. I hated it. Mm -hmm. And so it just wasn't for me. And that's why I didn't go all the way through college. I went to one semester like you. I was like, man, this sucks. I'd rather just be working. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, a, I love that this program is out there and others like it. And it, it, that way people can, you can still work with your hands and make a good living. Mm hmm. Sure. Um, yeah, really cool. quick, we have two What's minutes that? left to enter the festival giveaway. Better if hurry. you guys have not already done that, uh, link mm -hmm. in the description, go down, get entered into that. One winner tonight. All right, Mr. Clark wants to know, what is Justin's most difficult project he has had to build or work on? Oh, okay. What's been most challenging so, to you? So a lot of the work that we do, is, is really fun and really challenging. We're working, like like I said, in the high end, um, like top 1% custom houses. So we're working on like $14 million jobs in the Smoky Mountains, and it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I definitely say the most challenging job was, it was a lake house, and it had a super modern trim detail to where all the trim was flush to the drywall and it had a shadow line that went around like each door, each window, um, above the base. And it was, it was really cool. It was really challenging though, just because none of our guys have ever done a, a super unique detail like that. That sounds and so just the install neat. was super yeah. cool. I'm trying to imagine very, that like, yeah, futuristic. I can send you guys pictures afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to imagine cool. that now, and I just, I can't, my mind's not yeah, doing that. Yeah. I'll put some pictures in my story uh, after the stream, so you guys can check it out, too. Oh, no, Mill Pond. Your, your story has been so interesting to the listeners right now that Mill Pond Woodcraft oh. has burnt his supper listening to you. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Chase Tinsley says that you're an inspiration for woodworkers up and coming. Yeah, I, I agree. I, that's one of the main reasons I wanted you on the show is because you're so inspirational to be a young man starting out and not following the traditional path. <laughs> and 
<laughs> basically striking out on your own to to find out uh, what God has in store for you. Uh, does do you, uh, Mr. Clark wanted to know? Do you find it hard to get younger people to desire this type of work, mm-hmm. or are y'all not having any trouble? Yeah, um, actually, that's why I started doing social media was because when I, it was my senior year of high school and all of my friends were going off to be like doctors and like lawyers and all those all these fancy jobs and I wanted to get into construction I wanted to like I loved woodworking I was doing that kind of stuff and they all thought I was crazy for wanting to do that and so I started doing woodworking to try to get my friends more excited about just what's going on like with with construction with all the trades and so that's kind of what I'm trying to do now is just inspire younger people, talk to other young people, tell them that college is not the only way because mm-hmm. while it, I'm, not, I'm not anti-education by any means. Right. But, but it's not the only people, alternative out there. Exactly. Exactly. And people um, just lots of times aren't aware of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not aware of the money that's out there. They're not aware of how much fun it can be. Like not every trades job is, a, is grunt work or just dirty work. And a lot of it is. But, you know, find companies like Finish Point, find other companies like that who are willing to invest in you and not just, you know, make you a broom pusher. And it's awesome. So it has been kind of difficult to find young people and get them excited. Even I was at a conference this last weekend and there was a class on um, bridging the skills gap. And I was super excited. And at this conference, there were over, I want to say over 4,000 contractors. And there's only like 20 people at this session. Wow. And that was just super disappointing because everyone complains about it, but nobody does anything about it. Yeah. So I make fun videos. I try to make it, make it um, just make it fun and show off the fact that it's, it's technical. Like you use your mind, it's challenging, it's complicated and it's fun. Sing Haven, I'm not going to say your name right. I know I didn't. <laughs> says, hi, first time on our live, but not new to watching our videos. And thanks from South Africa. Thank you. Welcome. I'm going to call you Sing. Awesome. Um, Scruffy wants to know, Scruffy Santa says that he's from Western Pennsylvania and wants to know what part of Pennsylvania you hail from. <laughs> I was, uh, I grew up in Lewisburg, um, about 40 minutes south of Williamsport where the Little League World Series is. Okay. Well, there That's you go, Scruffy. Our claim to fame. <laughs> All right, it's time to do our drawing, isn't it? Uh, almost. We, do it, we, do it, we know what time we do it at. We on do it now. <laughs> we don't do it now. Okay. We do it at a certain we, time. I thought maybe we would just do the PowerPoint at seven thirty. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so where uh, Stephanie wants to know where can we best support you on your socials at? Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Um, you can go to Ross the Tool Guy on Instagram, and as of yesterday on Facebook. <laughs> and um, on YouTube. So far, Facebook and YouTube, I'm just kind of recycling some of the reels that I've made uh, over the yeah. years. It's all still very brand new, but the goal is to get into more YouTube and some longer format videos. So yeah, Ross the Tool Guy. Ross the Tool Guy. You can make, you'd Four, make a cool YouTube channel. 4321 made a good point. Stephanie had said, you know, college is not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, 4321 says that your friends... Uh, well, it said that, you know, you may be making like $50,000 a year right now while your friends are in school to be a doctor or whatever it is, but they're already at $100,000 in debt. <laughs> so I know those, you know, aren't exact numbers and stuff, but that's, you know, you've got to consider that kind of stuff too. It's not a one size fits all. Um, it's a big investment. Trust yep, me, I know is. all about that uh, college debt. Yeah. Yeah, if you're looking for uh, Ross the Tool Guy on Instagram, uh, this is what his page looks like. You can see his logo right there, Ross the Tool Guy, all one word, Ross the Tool Guy. You, when you see this, oh, when what you see you this uh, screen there, you know you're at the right place. So we'll give him a follow. Good deal. So, what was the uh, hardest skill to learn from finished carpentry? Like, what's the one thing that's giving you the most trouble? Oh, I think. patience. <laughs> that would be mine. <laughs> Definitely be mine. <laughs> I think uh, crown was probably the most difficult to learn. Really? Um, just because there's 
you know, with most baseboards or most casing, like you lay it flat, you just cut it on a miter saw, you know, and your miter, like it all makes sense. Whereas, you know, with crown, you bring in your spring angle, angle. And so all of a sudden, yeah, you're cutting um, a double bevel on, on all your cuts. And mm -hmm. even the installation, it's like you, you mess with it in the corner, you play with it, and just there's still a gap. And then your, you know, your lead carpenter, whoever, just gives it one tap in the one direction. All of a sudden, it's like butt tight. It's like, how did that just happen? Um, <laughs> you should have seen so it when he tried it one time. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I can imagine. And, and what's funny is like, I'm sure in these, because y'all are working in some really nice homes and it's not just a 45 degree or a 90 degree corner you're working in. A lot of those like take several angles to get around and all kind of crazy stuff. Oh yeah. I haven't, I haven't done any like crazy radius stuff yet, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, making some circle. Well, actually, okay. I did do a little bit of casing. Um, with some like circle windows and stuff. That was super fun. I'm super excited to get into uh, building some stairs. Hopefully I'll be on a stair job coming up with probably the best, if not easily is one of the best stair builders in all of like the Southeast. Wow. And um, that's cool. hopefully I'll get to learn from him pretty soon. That's, so I excited. think that's another interesting point is that you're working with some of the best of the mm -hmm. best in the trade. And that's who you're getting to learn under. I think that's and you're looking forward to doing it versus yeah. dreading it. Yeah. That's a, a mindset. You know, you've got a different mindset than some of these other people. And it's great that with your mindset, you're trying to get out there and get other young people interested in that and showing them the love of it instead of, I mean, there's negatives with everything, mm -hmm. but you're trying to foster that, that love of something. And I think that's wonderful. I think more, more young people need that. Mr. Uh, Reese Hunt wants to know, what is the most rewarding aspect of finished carpentry? Most rewarding aspect of finished carpentry? Oh, man. <laughs> Probably the final product. Finished carpentry is one of those things where you might not get a lot on the wall in one day. So at the end of the day, you don't necessarily feel super satisfied because you look at what you've done and it's just like a small portion of, of the project, right? But after the painters come in, after the finish crews come in and you get to see that final product just shine, you know, whether it's like glossy or wood stain or whatever it is, um, being able to see that final product and also being able to see the homeowner's reaction to that final product and just seeing their faces light up and just seeing yeah. how much they love that. That's probably the best um, or That's most cool. rewarding part about finished carpentry. Yep, that is awesome. The masterpiece, Kevin yeah. says. <laughs> yep. Totes McGoat. <laughs> love that name, Totes McGoat. He <laughs> says, if you're local to Knoxville, is that a positive as far as this program goes? Or do, do they uh, take that into consideration at all? Do you know? Um, location, as far as I'm aware, isn't taken into consideration. If you want to, um, since you're already in Knoxville, or if you're local to Knoxville, we also like take in apprentices all year long. You might not get, um, you know, all of the benefits, but you still get like a tool budget. You still get, you know, 30 to 50 K to learn, um, and some of those other, uh, benefits. So That's definitely awesome. check us out if you're local to Knoxville. We, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. This finish point trim is the name of the company. Yes, sir. Yep. Finish point trim. Awesome. And we also have a cabinet division. We don't currently have like a, you know, apprentice scholarship program with the cabinet division, but if you want to get into cabinetry, you can come check us out. We, uh, we love teaching and, um, that's, that's a newer branch of a finish point. So, uh, we, we're still learning, but yeah, if you guys want to get into cabinetry, there's an opportunity for that too. I was just fixing to ask this. DJ Ensing says, my wife asked Justin, what is your favorite tool for finishing? Hmm. Um, well, finishing, I don't get into the finishing work, but if she means like finished carpentry as a whole, right? I would definitely say the radio. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I cannot work without music going on at the job site. So the radio. <laughs> awesome. Actual like tools I have my hands on. Um, a game changer for me has been cordless nail guns. I have Milwaukee's cordless nail guns, the 15 yep. gauge, 18 gauge, and 23 gauge. I use those things every single day. Um, all of the older carpenters who, when I first came in, they're like, oh, these things are too heavy. Um, and all that stuff. Outside the door. They, they 
started using um, mine, and now they all like went over and That's came awesome. to the dark side and started using cordless nail guns. <laughs> so what radio do you have? I have the uh, Milwaukee's M12. We noticed the theme. I have a lot of Milwaukee. Uh, I see um, a flag behind you. I don't know why you like. <laughs> <laughs> what? Milwaukee? Um, I have Milwaukee's M12 uh, charger slash radio. Cool. I saw you have gotten recently. Uh, I've got, got a few red tools. On, on, the, on the red tools, yeah. I've got a few. So what happened was... <laughs> what happened was... I bought one. Well, what did I do? I bought the... the I bought the M18 router because it was on a super good deal. And like two weeks later, I started buying more and more and more and more. I just recently picked up a bunch of pack out stuff. So You get hooked and then it just keeps going. It's like Festival. Yep. I just bought my first Festival dust extractor. Oh, you're, and now you're it's done like now. I'm looking at a track nope. saw, um, <laughs> sander, a router. Mm-hmm. It, it's going downhill. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, you know what time do you? You still turn to shoot your guest post. It's giveaway time. <laughs> All right, so we're giving away a Festool track saw, just like Mr. Justin said. Maybe you'll win it. And uh, we are going to draw one winner off of this, and you do not have to be present to win, and I will not contact you on commenting on this video or any other social media. You will get an email from me uh, with the email that you've left. So uh, we can't show the winner being drawn because it will show their email, but I can post it to the uh, thing once the name is, once the drawing is done. I'm so ready. Well, you're the how drawer. Many, I know. How many uh, entries do we have? Uh, let's see. Let me refresh. Look at that. Yep. We have 158,548 entries, but that's not So your how chances many people. are good. That's not how many people <laughs> entered. Uh, you got multiple <laughs> entries for completing certain tasks, uh, but uh, yeah. All there right. You Am you I sure? ready? Are you ready? Draw right for here? that track saw, girl. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous. <laughs> All right, Mimi. Let's it always takes forever win. to draw. Oh, uh, 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 uh. she saw her out there. You gotta oh, draw. I didn't hit draw, yeah. did I? No, stop, stop. Mia, put her down because she's fixing a bar. Okay, remote. okay, stop. It takes. It, it always forever. takes it forever after she hits draw. Come on. Sometimes I have to hit. Uh, no, don't mess with it. Just give it a minute. It it won't. Last time I had if to you hit don't refresh. hit refresh. Yep. Okay. There oh, it is. Yep. Ah. Uh, Elena, I cannot say her name. <laughs> Cinemaki. Cinemaki. Elena, or I think it's Elena. Elena Cinemaki from Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii. I'm sending a festival to Hawaii. Okay, then. Uh, I can announce the winner in the widget, and then oh, I'll be able that to show ours. it. Okay. Did it put it up there? Uh, yes. It's still got our Somewhere. email. I'm, I'm, I'm correcting that now. Oh, oh All right. there it there is. There we go. Now I'm fixing to show it to everybody so they know that it's legit. Does that say what number entry she was? Yes. By chance? She was 154,926th. So she just entered today, yep. most likely, because this morning I had 154,000 on there. Elena that S., you'll so get an cool. email from me uh, now. Uh, letting <laughs> Congratulations, you know. Congratulations, Elena. I wish that, I could say your last awesome. name, so... I said it correctly. I'm guarantee it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so we was talking about the track saw. The Festival track saw is absolutely awesome. I love that thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I got the, also the Milwaukee track saw in the review. Either one of those. Like, if, you, if you're on the Milwaukee bandwagon already, you're not going to miss anything by getting the Festival. Like, either one of those mm-hmm. are super nice. Right. The only reason um, I would go yeah, with uh, Festival is if you wanted also to get the MFT table that integrates with it so well. But other than that, awesome. Have yep. you used the, the HK, HKC at all? No, I haven't. Sled? No. So that has been a game changer of a tool. Uh, hey, Miss Ann. use that thing all the time. It has really? a cross cut sled. So basically you can make like instant 90 degree angles or whatever angles you want um, with this like circular saw slash track saw. And nice. Festool is coming out with a TS-60 in yeah. the summer. And I got my hands on it at this conference at JLC uh, this last weekend. And after using that, it's like, man, this, I think I'm going to get that one because it's uh, it's like the full, you know, the rest of the TS models. But it also works on that uh, crosscut saw, uh, track. So yeah. I don't know, man. They, they got me hooked. <laughs> <laughs> they got you now. They got you. All oh, your yeah. red tools are gone. Yep. You, you get your, I wouldn't say the, gone. Not <laughs> gone. Yours aren't gone either. No, you but just collect more. Look at Mia's hairs like everywhere. Mm-hmm. Once they um they kind of hook you in, they they got you. 
<laughs> Mr. Clark says, is Justin going to be a festival addict? <laughs> Maybe. Um, don't know yet. Uh, I don't know. I keep telling my girlfriend, like, I need to buy her uh, a, a ring. Or I tell her, like, look, the ring's getting pushed off because I need to buy a festival. <laughs> so That's awesome. <laughs> That's going to get you in so much trouble, but it's yeah. so awesome. Uh, yeah. It's so much trouble. Yeah, don't do that. Don't <laughs> tell her that. <laughs> Michael Robinson has an excellent question. He says, what is the best way to choose a carpenter to work on you or your own home, do you think? Mm. That's a good question. Like how how do how do we know that you know if somebody's just out there randomly finding finish point? How do we know that they're going to do good work? Yeah, so people, you know, there's a lot of like licensed contractors out there, and people get uh, screwed over a lot of times um, with the building process. I would think one of the things is look past just their license and um, everything like that, and look at their testimonials. Maybe talk to other people in the area. Find out other people who've used them and just their interactions with them in the past. It's good advice. Lane, I don't think Festool makes rings. Man, if they did, I don't think there'd that's be a whole bunch of saying, dudes but... buying them and getting, probably not getting oh, the yes. <laughs> woodworkers poor, like fiancés, man. Oh, so. Man. <laughs> Will you marry me? If, Absolutely not. If she likes emeralds, <laughs> get her an emerald and diamond ring and say, I wanted us to have a matching set of something. <laughs> <laughs> that way you can buy the festival and the emerald. See? Yes. I, I don't I need it. an emerald, by the way. Oh, okay. I was taking notes over here. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love emeralds. I just already have one. <laughs> Fred said, I'm sure woodpeckers is close to making rings. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Do you own any woodpeckers tools? What are your what are your, so what are your uh, layout tools look like? What are you using for like squares and and stuff like that that on the job site? Uh, honestly, nothing really crazy. I use a spec ops tape. I use um, Milwaukee's little trim square. Um, I use Empire's combo square. Craig has a reveal jig that I never heard of until I moved to finish point. I use that thing all the time. FastCap makes these um, mag shims, which are basically kind of like a setup block, but they have magnets and you, like they're eight inch thick, and so you can stack up as many as you need to do whatever you want. I so I use those a lot. Um, we also use a, there's this Asian company, I'm not sure, I want to say Japan, but I'm not 100% sure on that. They make a really fine streamline and a really fine chalk line. And I'd never heard of them, so I came to Finish Point and I kind of bought some tools on our tool list before moving. And so when I got to Knoxville, I opened this box that was just um, this uh, this writing on it and I had no clue what it was. I was looking at the tool, it didn't make any sense. I was like, what in the world did I just buy? And so I just kind of like snooped around, watched my coworkers for a little while and I saw them using one. I was like, oh, okay. Um, that is it. I believe it's Shinwa. Um, and they, yeah, they make chalk lines and dry lines and stuff like that. So, what was really the cross cut crazy. thing that he mentioned? Four three two one wants um, to know. So the the saw is the HK or the HKC over from Festool, and I believe the cross cut sled is called the FSK. And then they have like different sizes, like FSK four twenty. It's made by Festool also. Like mm, yeah, it's all made by Festool. Anthony yeah, Tizzo wants to know Festool. what's your favorite tool brand. If you had to pick a favorite. Oh, if I had to pick a favorite. Actually, I just made a video. And Anthony's uh, one of my one of my favorite buddies back at home. He was one of the guys who uh, encouraged me to start making videos and making content. So shout out to Anthony. But it would definitely have to be Milwaukee. Um, yeah. They, I just I started with them when I was 16. My dad got me my first drill driver set. And little did he know he was going to be addicted to something probably more expensive than like a cocaine addiction. Is that the one where but, you pulled off? <laughs> is that the one you had the pyramid? Yeah, I had the pyramid. And Can I play that real the, quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Oh, is it that one? Yeah. That was hilarious. Have you seen it? Yeah. I showed, showed it to it you. To me. Yeah, I showed because she's a huge hilarious. dance mom. Yeah, it was hilarious. Greatest video ever, I think. We get the audio. Paige, you were good. I'm waiting for you to be great. And next, <laughs> this was fantastic. You didn't stick out to me. We're going to get copyrighted for this. I guarantee it. 
There goes, there goes the live stream. There goes the way to stop. I'm going to mute it because I don't want to get a copyright strike. But basically, if you've ever watched Dance Mom, she's a huge fan of Dance Mom. <laughs> <laughs> she he done a, a, a replay of that. It's super cool. You got to go check it out on his Instagram. Uh, the dude's funny. He's making some cool content over there. So be sure. To Let's just say out. Maddie was at the top. <laughs> Maddie was at the top, just like she's always at the top. I replay every season. I saw Gianna from Dance Mom. Yeah, Moms we went to LA and she LA. had to go to buy the dance studio. We looked in the window like a bunch of weirdos. Gianna was walking in there. <laughs> I may have got a little <laughs> like starstruck. Okay. Anyway, off that. That was that was an awesome video. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Carr wants to know, what do you think about Bosch Tools compared to Milwaukee? Honestly, I haven't used too many Bosch Tools. I know they make a great router, and their sanders are super cool. I haven't gotten a lot of experience with them, but every time I go to Lowe's, their like 12-volt series seems super cool. They have a sander, a little planer, and a little router, I want to say. And some other like cool tools, it's like, man, I wish, like, say, Milwaukee or someone else made them. So I personally don't have that many Bosch tools. They also make great lasers, but I, I'm i not against them or anything. I haven't heard anything bad. Fred wants to know, is Shinwa, S-H-I-N-W-A, the brand of the line that you're using? Or is it? Yes, yes. Okay, because somebody else asked if it was T-A-G-I-M-A. Uh, it's not It's not Tajima. No, okay. it's Shinwa. Shinwa is the right one. Uh, I think they're on Amazon. Um. And we got to get some affiliate links rocking <laughs> with all these <laughs> shout outs. All right. So we've kept you on here for a while, but Stephanie has a really good question that I think would be good to kind of end the show with tonight. Um, she said that sometimes young people can tell us older folks the best way to reach the younger generation. How would you recommend that we reach out to young people to get them interested in woodworking? That's a great question. I would say just make it exciting. Um, Like, Matt, you are one of the guys who got me into woodworking when I was still in high school because I saw your videos and I saw the tools that you were using and I saw the materials that you were using and I realized I could do this with no experience. So being a great teacher and just showing people that it's obtainable and that it's also exciting and fun I think is the best thing that you can do and get, get them like some experience. Like I grew up with my dad in construction. So I was able to get my hands on some tools growing up. Um, if possible, give them some hands on experience, let them mess around uh, with, with some of your tools. You know, don't put them in a dangerous situation unless you have a saw stop or something, but <laughs> just give them some hands on experience and be, be the example. Like if, if you are a miserable woodworker, People are going to associate woodworking with being miserable. Yep. So if, if you're like just a happy person and enjoy what you do, show it off. Share it with people. Yep. yep. And you can do that on social media. Like You don't have to have people coming into your house and, and or into your shop and working. You can, like you said, if you're genuinely excited about something, mm-hmm. don't be afraid to get it on camera and put it, on, put it out there because you never know who you might inspire. So. And Dan Dixon says, and don't be afraid to make a few mistakes. That's right. That's right. Oh, 100%. At finish point, we just say, it's just wood, baby. And all that <laughs> That's right. is, but like, if you mess up with cut, it's wood. It regrows yeah. on trees. Yes, sometimes wood is milled or maybe cut in a more expensive way than others. But at the end of the day, it can be replaced. Y'all need shirts. Says, it's just wood, baby. <laughs> it's just <laughs> wood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would probably sell really well. Yep. <laughs> all right. You have any other questions? No, man, I really appreciate that uh, you was uh, open to coming on here and talking about uh, Finish Point. I'll put a link in the description to Justin's Instagram as well as Finish Point's Instagram. You can go check him out. Uh, just an awesome guy. Probably one of the nicest guys I've met in recent years. Uh, just a very impressive young man, really. Yep. Y'all go check him out. We're proud of you, Justin. Yep. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on here. Like. This was this was a dream come true. You, you guys have been some of my favorite YouTubers since, like I said, in high school when I started watching your two by four. I did <laughs> <my> woodworking videos, <laughs> and I just really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you, you guys. All right, man. Thank you for coming. We'll stay in touch. All right. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, good night. You guys. Good night. All right. Well. That was awesome. I know y'all saw the same thing that we saw in him. Yeah. He's just a wonderful young man who's very much so 
who has really stepped outside of, I think, um, mm-hmm. a lot of our comfort zones. You know, he said he was an introvert and stuff, but, but or, uh, yeah, extrovert. He, he like stepped out and left everything he knew mm-hmm. and made Literally it work. took a leap of faith. Made it work. Yep. That leap that everybody keeps talking about, you know, like, oh, I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to. I can't imagine it at that age. I can't either. Leaving home. Leave mama. Daddy, everything you know, brother. Leaving home. Yeah, Oof. that has to be hard. Girlfriend. And, uh, I, I can't imagine. I, I it's it's <laughs> But at twenty he's already Yeah. He's already man, accomplished he, so much. He's still on here. He he is way far ahead of people who are in their fifties and sixties mm-hmm. and seventies, uh, just because he wasn't afraid to burn the boats. If you've never read that book, go read it. Burn the boat. Um, will you share Justin's uh it's Ross the Tool Guy. Go yeah, ahead it's and Ross share. the Tool Guy on Instagram. I've already mm-hmm. closed it. Oh, okay. Uh, but you can, uh, it's in the description of this TM video. Tim wanted to know. Yeah, you can go or not the, Tim, I'm sorry, Carrie. You can go to, in the link, uh, there's a link in the description of the video to Ross the Tool Guy. Uh, you can just go check him out on Instagram. Give Steph him a good follow. Steph says, we need to keep an eye on Justin because he's going places for sure. <laughs> oh, I, t- I totally agree. Mm-hmm. That young man will, 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 will he will impact lives uh, for decades, uh, Lord willing. And he's already impacting lives, really. And so we uh, met two young men um, that I mean, we met so many people that made an impact on us at WorkbenchCon. But we walked away talking about Justin and we talked about another young guy named Joe's mm-hmm. um, because it's so hard sometimes to see so much um, goodness. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody somebody said to us, tonight. yeah, somebody said something to us this weekend and California, they said, the more I meet people, the more I like dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, but people like Justin make you realize that they're, the good people are still there. Yep. You know what I mean? So we're we're really grateful to you, Justin, for coming on here with us tonight. We know that all of you guys enjoyed having them, too. Well. Without further ado, I hope you all have a good week. And yes. be sure, please go check him out. If you didn't win the festival, yes. don't hang your head down. We got some more stuff coming uh, that we're going to be giving away. That you guys mm-hmm. will uh, get a lot of uh, value and love out of. So, yep. Go check him out and uh, be sure and give him a follow and let him know uh, that uh, you watched him on the show. Yep. All right. All right. Y'all have a great week. See ya. Good night. <laughs>